Hey, what's up? So you're just in time for another eBay unboxing. So I don't always go for things. Well, I try to go for things with great rarity or great value for a really low price. But sometimes something uh, piques my interest in a listing, bad pictures, bad description. And it's almost like a mystery box, if you know what I mean. Like you're not sure what you're going to get. So uh, this is one of those. And uh, I paid 20 bucks for it. The seller wanted 30 bucks for it. I made an offer. They had to made an, uh, make an offer button. Made an offer for 20 bucks, free shipping. I figured, hey, 20 bucks, right? I'd spend that uh, more going to McDonald's or something like that. All right, so we don't know what we got here. It could be something that's booty. And you know what I mean by booty. And, or it could be something that's semi decent. <laughs> and we won't know until we see it. All right, so wow, lots of tape. Lots of tape, and that is a pain in me arse. All right, I'm trying to behave myself with the cursing, and don't know if my affliction of cursing is going to be cured anytime soon. All right, so what do we got here? Oh, wow. Okay, holy schmoly. All right, the seller did not say how big this was. Um, in the pictures, all I had was crummy, blurry, dark, pictures and bad lighting to go by and I thought it, like these links were going to be this big and so this thing is huge it's huge it's absolutely huge and I hate this cotton stuff because it sticks look at this it sticks to things oh my god this is actually freaking huge all right wait okay what is it another cameo bracelet but this thing in the pictures like the cameos are very poorly cards and they look tiny you know what let me show you let me show you and you'll see that what I mean by why I thought this was going to be really small. Okay, so this is the seller's pictures, and there was no, I mean, absolutely no indication how big this was. In the description, it just said um, gold-colored or brass-colored metal bracelet, and there you go. I thought it was going to be teeny, teeny, tiny, and I did not know, and the pictures were sort of crummy. You really can't tell what you're getting here because there's no description. And I mean, the pictures really aren't that crummy, but there's no like nothing next to it. Like sometimes people put a can of Coke next to it or a lighter or something to give you an idea of what you're getting. So this was like a total crapshoot. And I saw the brass on the back. I figured definitely not gold. I don't see any markings. And I figured it was vintage, probably, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll look at it. All right. So from the pictures, it looked like, hold on. These were tiny little shell cameos, like teeny tiny, and he just blew it up just to show you the detail. Now, they're not carved very well. That actually, you know, these aren't like your best cameos. But let's look at the bracelet now that we see this. Okay, so you can see that this is an enormous, enormous bracelet. All right, look. Look at this. Look at the size of this. Now, I thought it was going to be teeny tiny. Let's look it over and we'll figure out how old it is. So, generally, you have to be careful when trying to, like if you're new at collecting cameos, because um, I'm pretty much new, I'm not an expert, but you have to make sure you're not getting resin or some kind of molded plastic or celluloid um, or uh, I'm trying to think like uh, some faux type of uh, material that makes it look like it's a shell. Uh, you got to look at it close, you know, look at it really close. Generally, a, a, a carved shell cameo will have like a curve to it. So it won't be completely flat. So that's why you flip over the cameo. But in this instance, the back of the cameo is covered. So you can't really tell. So let's like look. And I can see, hold on. A little bit of a curve. So I think I see what they did here. Instead of getting a very thick expensive shell what they did was they used this backing this brass backing to raise it up a step and then they cut a thin thin cameo out and then pronged it in there uh so that would uh actually be cheaper for them to make this bracelet so let's go over the carvings now they're not going to be very good for this price for 20 doll hairs you're not going to get anything good they're going to look semi like human and semi like apes or gorillas but I'm looking so far, and I'm looking at the hairdo, and the hairdo indicates 20s to me or 1930s. Um, you see that short bob type of hair? That's uh, very, very, very uh, indicative of or indicative, whatever the way you pronounce that word, of the 20s. Let's check out this. Yeah, you see a bob over here. 
We got another short bob over here. Wow, that looks like a lady wearing a towel on her head. Look at her nose. And it's sort of laugh laughable and comical. And uh, shell carmios, uh, cameos were made, carmios, don't mind me. Shell cameos were made in Italy. So this was hastily carved. And you can see again, her nose is sort of funny looking. Not a very, very good carved cameo. And she's got some kind of drapery over her head. This one, again, look at the nose. Uh, follow the nose, it always knows. So you got this odd looking shaped nose and shaped head and uh, yeah, whatever that is on her head. <laughs> and let's get to that one. That one, eh, it's okay. But you're not gonna look close up at it. You're not, you're just not gonna look close up at it. As you can see, it's just, you're not gonna like go up to someone and say, oh, let me inspect your cameo. It's not gonna happen. Now, what are the clues? Who made this? Hmm, all right, so we can tell that this is probably not gold at all this is probably brass does not look like gold at all let's see if it has any markings and i just want to flip the box over and do it on the box because i don't want to scratch up the cameo so what you're going to do is sorry for that racket you're going to look very very carefully everywhere so on the safety on the little safety you're going to look for um some kind of marking sometimes a jeweler's initials or a company would be on there in this case, I don't think I see anything. And yeah, this is an early 20th century. Uh, you could see like a, a spring ring. Yeah, they call that a spring ring. Let's check out the closure. Is there any markings on the closure at all? I do not see any. Sometimes you'll have like a famous costume jewelry designer. Now, this is considered costume jewelry. This is not fine jewelry. And you're really not going to get fine jewelry for 20 doll hairs with free shipping. Not going to happen. Let's see. Do we have any makers' names in here? I think I see something right there. All right. I'll be back. Now, I looked it over, I mean, completely and thoroughly, and cannot find any markings at all. Oh, I have it upside down. And it might be older than what I thought it was. Now, this is what's known as Victorian Revival. And uh, Victorian Revival actually came back into style somewhere around the teens up until like the 40s. Um, and so you'd see a lot of this Victorian Revival type of jewelry, which would be considered very large, oversized, very fancy, very ornate. And uh, I'm guessing that these uh, cameos actually could be actually from about 1907 to 1920. Let's do some research quick. Now, this is a sweetheart bracelet, and I thought this was from the 1940s. When I looked at the carving, you can see, you know, the same short hair, um, the, weird, you know, oddly shaped nose and what have you. I thought this was from the 1940s. It's called a sweetheart bracelet. GIs during the war would give their uh, sweetheart a bracelet that opens up as a locket. So it's not what my bracelet is, but I thought that this was from the 30s. I was like, nope, this is from the 30s. But the strange thing is this is actually marked, patented in 1907. Although patents can last longer than the year that they're printed on, um, I would doubt that this would be a 1907 design into the 30s. And this particular bracelet has a patent November 5th, 1907. And so I'm thinking that my bracelet could possibly be as early as 1907. Now, if you type in Victorian Revival Cameo Bracelet, you get a lot uh, to look up. And there's a lot of things, um, again, from the, the teens, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. And it's very hard to tell the difference between a real Victorian piece and a real antique. Uh, for example, like this one looks very old, doesn't it? But it's not. And this one's only $18. And it has a resin cameo. It's not even real. And this is copper. And uh, this is actually made in the 80s. And let's uh, click to see more. And for example, an intaglio bracelet with earrings. Um, you can see here, it looks very old, doesn't it? It looks very Victorian. And uh, this one being sold for $65, and it's from the 1960s. So it's uh, very hard to actually figure out how old these uh, revivals are. Now, the designer was trying to go for something like this. And this is an antique cameo bracelet, a real Victorian cameo bracelet with really good carvings. $1,995 if it was real. And we're continuing to look. And again, here's a real one with good carvings. And again, 18 gold shell. Um, so basically gold shell is gold plated. 
A lot of these were gold plated over brass. Here's, um, let's check this one out over here and see, we can try to get an age. Okay, and there's a whole load of cameo jewelry under this lady's page and we're gonna have to scroll and find it. And it appears that this one is a revival with a cameo in the center. It does not say the age though, which sucks. And uh, I'm trying to find her on her website, a good example. This one is Victorian. And let's click on that and look at that. So that's what a real Victorian one would look like. And here's ours. And you can tell the carving is just not up to par with the Victorian. And so here's a 1920s one. And you can see the short, the shortened hairstyles of the day. Um, it's very, very evident there. That's definitely 1920s. And then here's another 1920s. And you can see the hair. Um, very short and bobbed. Here's a pendant dated 1925 with marcasites. And again, you can see the poor carving, the short hair that just goes across just like that. And very similar to ours. And this one is dated 1930s. Again, very similar to our style. And this is actually pretty cool. I found a 1930s uh, catalog for uh, beautiful jewelry. And a lot of this is actually just brass or silver. It's uh, really, uh, they have yellow gold as well. Once a uh, yellow gold plate. Um, here we go. So how much did these things uh, cost in the 1930s? So for example, this one is $5. This one is a smaller one. It's $4 and it looks like 80 cents. We got another one that's $5. Another one, $5. All different sizes, $3.50. How much was that in the 1930s? Okay, so in the 1930s, in mid 1930s, $5 would be equivalent to $108.76 today. And $3.50 would be equivalent to $76.13 today. So as you can see, these costume jewelry pieces actually weren't cheap. Like now you can go into a store and you can get costume jewelry for like $10 for a necklace. You can go on Amazon for $5, $8. You can get a whole pendant and a chain. Uh, and so this was not cheap, um, actually, even though it's not real gold or uh, real precious metal like silver. And so like the going prices for brass uh, Victorian Revival bracelets are... $295, $96.50, $25. It depends. It really, really depends. And some of these Victorian revivals are not cheap. $170, $90, $595. Well, they have uh, not real gemstones, but glass. $149, $155. And you can see it varies. Uh, two, $287, this one $65. And uh, they're really not as cheap as you'd think. And so if I had an Etsy store, what would I sell something like this for? I wouldn't give it away for free, that's for damn sure. Something this large and has real shell cameos, I wouldn't let this go for less than $225 to $250. And you might say, but damn, it's brass and it has ugly, ugly carvings. But look at the size of it. <laughs> this thing is enormous. It's huge. It's actually quite beautiful. It looks very, very, very Victorian. And if you were to get a real Victorian one with really, really, really high quality carvings and 14 karat gold, something this size you would expect to pay two to $5,000 for, without a doubt. Um, and uh, so this is a cheaper alternative. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, this was a great steal of a price at $20. So thinking it's just a mystery mosh posh, um, it turns out that it's valuable and it's uh, It was quite fun figuring out what the heck it is. And by the way, it's not marked. Not marked at all. Generally, these are marked with a designer. So that's why um, I'm thinking that this is actually early, from the 20s. Um, some might think it's possibly from the 30s. But I'm thinking it's an older piece um, before uh, markings became very, very important. And the manufacturers... Oh, I almost lost it. And the manufacturers, like, sort of forced um, the markings on things uh you know there was certain laws and what have you that um and plus major designers would actually want to like advertise their name 
and show off. Um, but this is actually something that probably, I don't know, perhaps was unmarked or the marking actually disappeared. Don't know where it went. Do you see it anywhere? If you know where there might be a marking hidden, uh, let me know. Tell me in the comments below. But I've looked this thing over with a fine tooth comb and a loop. Could not find one marking whatsoever. Now, I can do a test. This could be gold-plated. It does have a nice, uh, high-quality color to it. You could see that there. But I highly doubt that this would even be uh, plated. So as you can see, custom jewelry is actually quite fun to collect. You never know what you're going to find. And uh, this was a really uh, great score for 20 bucks. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon and so long. Oh my God, look at this in the box. Look how nice this looks in a box. So if like you were to actually list this and show it in a box like this, you could probably get some good money for this. <laughs> look at that. I mean, that makes a wonderful, fantastic presentation. Look at that. That is just phenomenal. All right, I had to come back and just show you that. Um, I got this box on Amazon for $7.99. It has lights in it. And it uh, really makes your jewelry look really expensive. And it comes in a, a hard case. It's like this hard uh, plastic or rubber. And it's, in, it's a really, really good quality uh, case. There you go. All right, so now let's just turn this bracelet into like a $275 bracelet all day long if I was to resell this in my Etsy shop. It might sit there for a year or two or three. But who cares? <laughs> because I'm not parting with this one. <laughs>